Without a doubt, there are three letters in the car community that will give you automatic street cred. And those words are GTI. But what if I told you that another three letters can even give you more street cred? Yes, those words are TCR. So let's be real, by now you would have read, listened to or watched many reviews about the Golf 7 GTI TCR because this car was launched internationally in 2019 and even our local colleagues have done cool things such as drag races, shootouts and all types of tests with this car. But we want to do things a bit differently. We want to keep it simple, mainly because it's pouring with rain outside and also because we want to find out if the TCR is worthy of the last hurrah of the Golf 7 GTI. So whilst we wait for the weather to dry up, let's talk about what the TCR gives you in terms of styling. Now the first thing that you'll notice, the very first thing, is this massive, massive, massive <laughs> rear diffuser, which doesn't look bad, but what I think would have complemented it a bit better is if they gave it an equally large rear spoiler, such as the one that you got in a golf club sport. Moving on to the side, you'll notice that you get honeycomb stickers, which I'm not 100% sure of, but what I am sure of are those lovely side skirts here in gloss black. You also do get matte black side mirrors, which match these amazing matte black 19-inch wheels. And to the front, VW have kept it quite simple. All they've done is add a gloss black front splitter. Overall, the car does have a presence about it, so yes, it does look like a special GTI. Before we get in, if you ever wanted to remind your GTI driving friends that your Golf is cooler than theirs, you'll notice that each time you open the door, the word TCR is illuminated on the floor. Nice touch. So. On the inside, you'll notice that this is pretty much stock standard Golf GTI. The biggest difference is that instead of leather seats, you've got this lovely plaid and Alcantara combination. But what I'm quite sad about is that you don't have the option to have the wonderful bucket seats, the same ones that you got in the Golf Club Sport. The steering wheel is pretty much identical to that of a Golf GTI, with the only difference being this red stripe. And you'll notice that you've got a wonderful marking that says 298 out of 300. So that means only 300 of these cars have been made and only a handful have come to South Africa. So we're currently driving car number 298. Speaking about driving, it looks like the rain has stopped. Let's go for a drive. So, the sun is still not out, but at least the roads are dry, so we can give the car a little bit of a go. First impressions? It's quick! <laughs> The first thing we need to mention, before we even do anything, is the fact that there's no such thing as a bad Golf GTI, which is a good thing for VW, but at the same time, it becomes a bit challenging for the brand to keep on bettering and bettering this model. So, what have they done to make this car super special, to make it the final GTI, the final goodbye? I'm gonna do this one last time. So for those GTI aficionados, you'll know that the GTI comes standard with 169 kilowatts and 350 newton meters of torque. The biggest difference with this car and a normal GTI is the fact that this car's got 213 kilowatts and 380 newton meters. What that does is that it gives you a zero to 100 time of 5.6 seconds, which is a very, very, very good time, especially for a front wheel drive car. So yes, in terms of the engine, we can say that the GTI TCR is a very, very good product. And you'll be also happy to know that the Verpa 
has not been left behind. Instead, it's even louder. So of course, if you're gonna give a GTI more power, you're gonna to want to make sure that the chassis can handle all that power. So VW in the TCR have lowered the car first and foremost, they've tweaked the suspension, and they've even tweaked the steering so that you've got a bit more feel in and out of the corners. And the result of that, I must say, you do have quite an accomplished product when you are driving quite dynamically. So you'll remember in the beginning of this review that we asked the question, does this car deserve the final badge, the final hurrah, the last goodbye to the Golf 7 GTI range? We need to remember that there's been a Golf 7 and a 7.5 and the biggest competition for this car in my mind is the Club Sport because when I tell you that that has got to be one of the best Golfs I have ever driven and when I say one of the best Golfs I've ever driven I say that for a reason because the best Golf I've ever driven is a Club Sport S and to me having spent time in all the special editions of the Golf 7 range I can't really say that this is the best one I've driven as much as this is a very accomplished car it does everything you want it to do it just doesn't have that fizz that you want from a Club Sport and when I tell you that the fizz that comes from a Club Sport S is something so special, I wonder if VW will ever be able to replicate that formula. As a result of that, I can't say that this is my favorite Golf 7 GTI. Yes, it's good, but it's no Club Sport, unfortunately.